So this week is vacation week. I'm here at a beach house on Folly Beach in Charleston, South Carolina with my family. And because of that, I, I just don't have as much interesting shit going on in the vlog as I typically would. You know, I don't have people coming through and meetings and all that stuff. So instead of giving you guys a bunch of boring footage of my fucking family vacation, which I know you don't care about, I went ahead and I went to a bunch of footage I've been sitting on that just never made it into a previous vlog for whatever reason, but it's all really good content. So I'm gonna plug that stuff in here and I'll make sure to set it up accordingly so you know what's going on. But yeah, that's that's essentially what this vlog's gonna be. Just a bit of a throwback to some, look at the fucking exposure. Go, Joe is gonna give me so much shit for this. Sorry, Joe. Anyway, so that's pretty much the essentially what I'm gonna do while I'm here. I am gonna try to go and drop in at CrossFit uh, James Island, which is the, the closest local CrossFit affiliate to here. So I'm gonna try to pop in there. But beyond that, that's what you're gonna get. So let me set up this very first scene. This is an initial business development call with CrossFit Strongtown. That's like the very first thing you need to do before uh, we work together. And I'm going through their Facebook business page. I'm kind of ripping it apart. You know, this looks good. This sucks ass. You need to fix this. And for those of you guys that think yours might need a bit of an uplift you know might need a little bit of a, a makeover this is for you what the fuck though Damn. is that I don't know again if I'm a prospect what does this photo this is the first thing I see this is like the front page of your website what does this yeah. photo tell me about your business we have, we have balls you've got balls exactly you've got you I didn't know yeah. there's a rogue fitness app right and you always keep the logo in the top left here you did that well this photo is the most important photo it's the first one they see it has to meet those three criteria. We have to change that out. Now, as I scroll down through your posts, we get the workout of the day you're posting. Thursday, 2 4 19. Great. Thanks for sharing the fucking date with me. I'm glad you're there to help me get that information. And then this I mean, it's an image of people working out, but if I go and click this as a prospect, someone may be interested in your shit, Dan. It's going to take me here and look at this weightlifting. Establish a one rep max power clip, uh, one rep max, uh, holy shit, like your storytelling organically is not doing the job. Squat endurance, establish a 20 rep max back squat. If I'm Sally and I even know what, a, I, like Sally doesn't probably even know what that means, but let's say she does and yeah. she is looking to start her fitness, you understand what, where the issue is? Stop posting your fucking workout to your Facebook business page. Your Facebook business page does not exist for your members. It exists for your prospects. It is a opportunity to story tell every single day to the people who are not currently customers of your service. For your current clients, you want somewhere to put all this bullshit? Make a private members only group. Put all your PR videos in there. Put all your workout of the days in there. Put all your stuff in there. Keep it off of this. This is only for prospects. When I changed my work, my website to the one we have now that Flex created, members came up and be like, I hate the new website. Yeah, I don't like this, I don't like this, I can't find that. I'm like, good, I didn't make it for you, asshole. Yeah. I made it for the people who don't know who I am and I need to tell a story. All right, so I'm gonna go work out and I'm gonna go to CrossFit James Island, which is the closest CrossFit gym to where we're staying and so if you've watched a lot of my content before I started doing the vlog There was a weekend where I had a gym owner down and I was talking about this exact gym I was in Charleston on vacation and I dropped in on the gym on Thursday Like well, all we have is open gym. I'm like What do you mean all you have is open gym? It's like Thursdays are a rest day. Well, you know, because three days on one day off. Yeah, there's a gym up the street that does that. But what if I didn't work out Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday? What if I've been on a fucking vacation? I just came back and all I want to do is run the gym I paid 200 bucks a month for. I'm going to go work out at. So that piece of content went out and a lot of people thought I was like kind of razzing on this guy because he has a scheduled rest day. And here's the deal. For those of you guys that, again, watch my stuff for business advice and you were in a steady city, a metropolitan area or an area where you have a lot of competition and things like that, don't have a fucking rest day. This is Folly Beach. This is like vacation central. Like the fact that the dude has a rest day, it makes more sense here than anywhere else. And I think the context of that conversation got lost a little bit in how we put out that content. My bad. So here's the flip of it. Today is their rest day, and I'm going to the gym on the rest day where all they have is open gym during set hours, and I'm really fucking excited for it because 
I really didn't want to have to adhere to a certain class time. I'm on vacation. I just want to go and do my own fucking thing. And it, it just, it's working out really well. It's, it's interesting how that stuff flips, but I'm still staying strong on this. Those of you guys who aren't in a beachy vacation fucking drop in culture town and you need to this gym to fucking survive everything for you, I don't recommend you have an entire day where you offer no classes because you've prescribed as a rest day. Let's go, guys. Do I need to have you fill out a waiver before you take all kinds of pictures and videos? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, nice to meet you. Kyle, nice to meet you as well. Awesome. Oh. Guys, real quick, this is Kyle. He's the owner. I haven't been introduced to you yet. Stu. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm just going to get some uh, footage if you don't mind. Awesome, dude. Good shit, man. I appreciate it. Thank Pleasure you very much. You, man. I Absolutely. appreciate you uh, working out. Yeah, for sure. Guys, if you're ever in the Folly area, come check out Kyle and James Island. Brother, thank you so much. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. That's Southern Hospitality. Um, really cool dude. We're good owner. It's so funny. As we came in, this is the first time I ever met him. And uh, he goes, I was recently watching one of your videos where you were talking about a gym on Charleston that, that was closed all day. And uh, we had a good fucking laugh. It was funny that he called me out on it. But awesome dude. He actually, like, we worked out together, hung out. So if you're ever in town, go check out these guys, even though they're closed for a day. But the funny thing is, he's since watching that video, they're changing that policy and they're going to be open. So no more scheduled rest day. So yeah, fuck it. Go see these guys when you're in Folly Beach, CrossFit James Island. Yeah, you get the hiccups? That's cute. All right, so this is me and my boy Levin. He is the owner of Petworth Fitness in Washington, D.C. We're jamming on PT First and my belief that personal training is gonna make better coaches than just having them in group only. In my experience, having a coach master the art of working with someone one-on-one -on -one and not just hurting a bunch of adults in a 60-minute time clock makes for a way better professional coach long-term. Hope you enjoy it. So if we're talking the differences in coaching requirements, PT to group, let's say the group workout is Diane, handstand push-ups and deadlifts, and the PT session is teaching someone and going through handstand push-ups and deadlifts. Right. Both an hour, they have the same movements, which one requires more coaching? Actual coaching, the PT session. The PT one does. 100%. Group coaching is such a fucking crock of shit. It's cat herding. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Especially a gym your size. If I took a stopwatch and I watched your coaches and I started that fucking stopwatch every time they actually spent interactive time with one human being and then did that, we'd be looking at less than five minutes in the entire fucking hour because they're too busy cat herding. Not that there's anything wrong with this. This is how we make our money. But what I'm telling you is you need better coaching when it's one-on-one. -on -one. If you're working with a new coach and you say, go and run that class, and then you go and you judge them. I mean, like, man, you didn't really do a good job scaling Sally to the on the on the squat. She can say or he can say to you, yeah, I know, but we were running over, and I didn't want to run into the next class, or I had to then go in and you know put out the fire with that guy's deadlift. But if you're watching someone do PT for an hour and it's deadlifts and handstand push-up modifications, and he can't do that within the hour, you're able to grab him and and objectively say. You didn't accomplish the goal. You had one fucking person, you had two movement goals for that session, and you didn't accomplish it. It's very objective. You will create far better group coaches when they are doing more one-on-one. -on -one. All right, so this next scene is from my recent PT First crash course that I co-hosted with Dr. Sean Pastuch of Active Life RX. And essentially what I'm talking about here is what I call the ARP, acknowledge, respond, and pivot. This is a technique that if you've ever read The Conversion Code by Chris Smith, he talks about in there. But uh, for those of you guys looking for some tactical sales tips, this is for you. Any of you guys get this phone call? I just wanna know pricing. Anyone get that phone call? Anyone ever hear that majority of your communication is nonverbal? It's body language. Like 90% of it is some number that someone made up, okay? Guess what, on the phone, 100% of your communication is verbal. 100%, all right? 
When somebody calls and says, I just want to know the pricing, ARP them, acknowledge, respond, and pivot. So Sally, let me get this straight. You just, you're just curious on pricing? Yeah, I just kinda, I'm just doing some price checking in the area, trying to find a gym, blah, blah, blah. Awesome, cool. So our prices range from $36 a week to $43 a week. Or our prices range from $10 a class to $25 a class. But we have a ton of different options. Let me get, let me get to know you a little bit better. What, what exactly are you looking for? How many days are you looking to come in? You're gonna find in sales, he who asks the questions is in control. That's how you get out of that speeding ticket. That's how you convince your wife not to go to that fundraiser I talked about. That is how you win in most conversations. He who asks the questions is in control. Ask more questions. She called into your house asking you questions. Uh Uh-uh, bitch. Nope, volley it back to her. Answer her question on your terms per class or per week, and then volley questions back. So if I push back and I say, okay, and I'm very specific about what I want. Sure. Uh, how much would that cost? Yeah. Yeah. If someone's going to give, someone's going to cut to it, I think in today's day and age, our bullshit meters are so high. If someone's like, well, no, no, I specifically, I want to train for three hours and I want to do this. Yes. Give them the price. I don't believe in that. Well, I can't sell, like uh, Hermosi's got a great line that I like is, well, it's kind of like a mechanic. Like if I bring my car to mechanic, I can't say how much does it cost. He's got to open up the hood and see what's in it. What I would do is I think you could essentially tell her, be like, well, I, if you wanted three sessions, it's this much per hour. These are our membership pricing per week, per class, but I don't know how many sessions you're gonna need. Have you been, you know, whatever, I would go back another question, how long have you been working out? How many, like, I would try to kick it back to them, but yeah, I, I would never just, no, like, under no means hold the pricing behind if they're really pushing. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Sean actually just texted me earlier today uh, recommending that we do another one. So, yeah, stay tuned. I don't know what city it's going to be. I don't know when it is, but there will be another PT First Crash Course coming somewhere in the United States somewhat soon.